Welcome everybody to Pog and Friends. We're so excited that you're here. Um, Pog is a poetry, performance, innovative and experimental arts um, organization that has been doing work um, in Tucson to support uh, new art and poetry, especially since 1996. Uh, we've been doing this Hog and Friends event for more than 10 years now, I think, where we invite a huge swath of the community to come in, uh, share their poetry, share their work, and create really a, a wonderful quilt of what's happening in Tucson right now. So thank you all for being here, and thanks everybody for coming and squishing into our space here. Now, is there is a swamp cooler. Is that turned on back there, Dylan? No. Will you turn it on? Yep. <laughs> it's really just a fan, but we'll get some fan air in here. Thank you. <laughs> That's helping. It, did, it also will add to the drone, so everybody will now be harmonizing with this drone while reading. Um, so. It's really exciting also to see so many readers um, here, so many so many old friends, new friends. And I also want to welcome everybody to Wave Archive, which is this space that you're in, which is a new space that is built upon an old space. Uh, many of you might know Exploded View, uh, which was a micro cinema, uh, also an experimental art space put together um, by uh, David and Rebecca. And uh, they have done all this work to make this space like this. Um, and we've just come in and now are, have cleaned it up and put together the Wave Archive, as you can see. Anybody wants to add to the Wave Archive, please bring Wave paintings. We want them. And uh, we will continually be adding to them. But Wave Archive is going to be a space for especially experimental music, um, video art, performance art, um, everything that sort of overlaps here with Pog. So poetry, art, music, this is the place for it. So I'm so glad that you're all here, and I'm so glad the space is opening up again. So thank you all. Um, as always, um, Pog has many supporters, um, and I want to acknowledge those supporters, uh, including the Arizona Commission for the Arts, Poets and Writers, Chax Press, uh, the UA Poetry Center, the UA English Department, Arizona Quarterly, and um, also you all, some of our uh, individual donors, of uh, people who support POG and what we're doing here. So uh, if you would like to donate individually, we have QR codes in the back. You can also go to POG Arts Tucson. As many of you know, right, after the pandemic, there was this flood of money, right? Oh, everyone, right? And that flood has receded. And so if you can help us in any way, and many of you already have just at the door, we really appreciate it. You can help us keep programming and supporting artists. Um, speaking of, we have a busy season at POG. Our next reading is going to be October 19th, in this space again, with the poet James Sherry and our own Cynthia Miller, sitting behind the desk door. A Zoom reading on November 16th with Laura Jaramillo and Saba Razvi. And then uh, back in this space, um, we'll have uh, Pierre Jory, uh, Nicole uh, Perrampit, and David Weiss reading uh, on November 23rd. That's going to be awesome. So, really excited for our fall season coming up. And I think that's all the things we need to say. Of course, there's something we always need to say, which is to acknowledge the fact that this land that we are on well, is taken land, and it's land that we need to uh, acknowledge those who came before us and took care of it and continue to take care of it alongside us. Um, I also want to um, recognize um, everyone who's a POG board member in the room. And so if you have any issues and you want to talk about it, please come to us and, and talk to us. Um, so let's get to the reading, right? Everyone here, we have three minutes each. Bam, bam, bam. Charles is going to 
have the order and yell it out, I will look at you distressingly if you start to get close to the three minute mark. And um, I'm really excited just to have everyone read. So Charles, please come up and announce our first reader. Or, or just announce it from there. Also say, the three minutes start when you hit the microphone. So don't so introduce your poems. Okay. Logan Phillips is the first reader. Hey everybody, my two minutes started. Uh, this is a poem from uh, uh, Novographias 4, and um, I have a few copies if you're interested, it looks like this. Dome half-lit architecture meant to invoke God, a sun catcher. Spring says we could live our whole lives without sunsets, and life would still be so lush. But on top of everything else, we also get sunsets. All of us hinted at by sun, heliocentric. The kids were in the arroyo riding a pallet down the steep side, real desert kid activities. Dust a sun catcher. Push, push, push before gravity takes over. How kids gravitate towards each other in allegiance before suspicion. Play invented again and again in the face of task. Pull of the moon, even on the desert. Water-filled cacti swell and lean, tracking the rock across the sky and month. Flowers open, precarious as orbit, a moon of two sides, a sphere into binary, into quarters, last night illumined nonetheless. I risked my life just to arrive, pedal versus all these cars, drivers all staring at their laps or their palms, these cars glint and blast through a sun catcher of cement and steel and debris, it's a textual light, celestial infiltrating the brutalist. There will be a time when all that remains is essential relationship, long after maintenance is memory and function is countered with but for what and for whom and for why though, and then this will be the infrastructure for my dreams to land, long after the freeway has been dynamited for the sake of silence. Whole life will slow and therefore lengthen, story opening at dawn. I am daily in this light, its abundance and auspicion, burning blue, all movement casting a shadow, ink all the page, all fleeting, feigning permanence, drawing lines of shadow. I find myself less capable of ignoring the consequences of my comfort, for whom the AC, for whom the shade. I will remove every polar pop from the arroyo, <laughs> and still some styrofoam executive will make a million dollars this year. I long to do more than tidy around the edges. This is the light speaking. It burns and will return my call in rhythm with the moon. The water for what? The water for whom? The dreamer is the essential worker, the sun catcher. The boss is the crisis maker, the categorical quarter pusher, and the kids laughing pull it all down open as flowers. to grass growing overhead or to graves being dug as a chicken listens to the night a shadow to a passing cloud 
all night I sat up thinking, I kept thinking it was quite simply unbelievable in light of the history that the body is even connected to a soul. If the soul might in any way correspond with what the soul is not. Or that what the soul is not might be permitted to enter or be transmitted by what is not yet in light of the history the permitted a soul. Or that what has not yet been permitted a soul is in any way separate from or communicable without what has not yet been permitted. Or that O oh body, O oh divine body, could it be that after all there is nothing to rejoin? Could it be that in light of the history of what has not yet been permitted, there is no single truth to pronounce, only different ways of speaking? Oh, oh body, oh, oh, oh body, oh. Brother, hear this. Brother, listen. Brother, write this down. Thank you. capital punishment with Love Island in the background. Uh, when I hold up your number, just read the line on your page. We typically exchange the world's horrors over dinner. After dinner, we divide the horrors to make them more manageable. One evening, while you watch TV, I read about the history of capital punishment. I'm sorry, dear, but you are up for elimination. <laughs> there are a surprising variety of dismemberments, including torn apart by four ships, torn apart by stones, and torn apart by two trees. This method involving the offender's legs and a good deal of rope reserved only for adulterers. This isn't the last you'll be hearing from me. Many of the less inventive methods involve horses, and there's at least one technique in which ancient elephants were made to wear, essentially, ice skates and tromped about on the victim until they were thoroughly minced. I'm not here to make friends. I know it's grim, but I really want to tell you. That's love. Please share in my discomfort. Those such discoveries should be sealed by a complex knot, locked in a tomb, and forgotten for 3,000 years. Show us that you deserve to be here. But to keep such a fact to myself, I decide to say nothing. That's love. I've got a text. I decide to share it after all. At the end of the day, I've got to keep my options open. I'll take it to the grave. Weeks pass, we dine at an expensive restaurant by the sea. Mackerel, wrapped in banana leaf. I wonder if there will be a time. I think this could be real. <laughs> Between April 1962 and April 1992, no executions were performed in Arizona. I was not unhappy, but I could have been happier. There will never be a better time. The horrors multiply like horny rabbits. I try to hide a flickering in the back of my throat like a pilot light. Tonight, someone is going home. Tonight, someone like me is going home and keeping quiet.
So last year I read a poem called The Bounty Hunter Librarian. But then I got an archivist job, so that <laughs> resulted in many thoughtful, poignant poems. This is not one of them. <laughs> Important job skill numero uno. If this archiving job were a TV show, I would have found a body in the repository or the storage room by now. Maybe there would be a weapon stashed behind the Bryce Canyon collection or buried in a binder box labeled White Sands National Park. There would probably be a court case in season two between the Park Service and a disgruntled former employee found with explosives in the museum collection. The writers would struggle to create some bizarre love triangle which could be tough to pull off since most of us are solidly on the spectrum. <laughs> In season three, an archivist disappears, then a curator. Fear creeps into every corner of the place, and then the bodies are found in the freezer room. Their brains savagely ripped from their skulls, finally confirming everyone's darkest fear that the zombie apocalypse is not only real, <coughs> but deadly serious and emanating from the heart of the Park Service. <laughs> Along with Bigfoot, the Badlands Banshee, Crater Lake's Creature from the Deep, Mothman, the Furry Freak Brothers, and Mr. Natural. <laughs> Emmy award-winning drama like this is being cooked up daily in this building of super long hallways patterned after the opening sequence with Don Adams and Get Smart. Only murders in the building ain't got nothing on us. In this TV show I call my assistant curator job, the only limit is my imagination and how much prime time spaghetti and revenge I can squeeze through my pasta maker pen to keep me entertained during that afternoon slump that cries out for what most civilized cultures call the siesta. And everyone who's new, welcome to Saunders last week. It's been really lovely to get to know some of the poetry community here. Um, I trained as a musician, so I've picked a, a music-themed poem. Um, it's written on piano keys you can maybe see on the phone, so that might come into play later. Um, there's a piano term called jeu de parler, which is playing the piano really kind of like springily. Brill for brillante. Chopin was gay, maybe, the news said. He liked a sparkling urinal or something line scaleless, and I guess we wouldn't notice if these were fueled by fizzy water, except it might be messy, but fizzy and fun. Legal challenges to poems, the repeal of a poem, its redaction, rescission. Did you know that was a word for rescindment? Two words meaning the same with their word genitals matched, or some sort of gagging order might work and nowhere to tinkle. Scattered on jeu de parler. Um, and now, because it's on piano keys, I'm going to play it like a scale. Chopin was gay, maybe the news <laughs> said. He liked a sparkling urinal or something lime scaleless. And I guess we would notice if these were fueled by fizzy water, except it might be messy, but fizzy and fun. Legal challenges to poems that appeal off a poem. It's redaction, rescission. Did you know that was a word for rescindment? Two words meaning the same with their word genitals match, or some sort of gagging order might work, and nowhere to tinkle, scattering on the de parler, and nowhere to tinkle, or it might work, some sort of gagging match, or word genitals the same with their two words meaning rescindment. What's a word for it? Did you know that? Redaction, rescission of a poem, its poems and appeal, legal challenges to much fizzy and fun, it might be messy, by fizzy water, except if these were fueled, we would notice line skillless, and I guess you rhinal or something, he liked a sparkling, then you said Chopin was gay, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Suppose I am a fool and 
My hands are very small, maybe the size of keys. And when I speak, I make the smallest hand gestures and wag a finger like a little bee through the air. And when I tell jokes, I raise one eyebrow to the audience to make them laugh even harder. And I never have to think of any jokes. They just come out from the back of my head like Voldemort. And I go on a great big world tour and make crude jokes. And at least one person from every show pees themselves from laughing. And actually, they are paid by me to do it, so the show seems even funnier. <laughs> and when I go back to my hotel room and crawl into bed after inspecting the sheets for bugs and eating the bugs, my eyes do dances under my eyelids like they are getting freaky with it on their own stage. And one night, a fan asked to take a picture. And I ask, of what? And she laughs. And really, I am being serious. And another night, someone throws a tomato at me from the crowd, and I catch it in my mouth. And it is a good tomato that bursts <laughs> like laughter. And everyone laughs with me, so I take a bow, and my nose touches the stage floor and comes up a little bit smudged with other people's old performance to dirty jokes, and everyone laughs even harder. Yeah. folks are singing, I'll change up what I thought I would read. <laughs> uh, the only note is that George Zimmerman uh, is the Peruvian-American killer of Trayvon Martin. Um, I myself being Peruvian-American. And this is in the voice of a baby coming into consciousness. All right, you light-headed fathers. I'd ask for rain. Wait until January because I'll be born with a sash. This is where you shit. This, I'm told, is a drawer for aftershave. Knowing things, systems that churn for hundreds of years, earns harrowing honors that get smeared. Some of it sticks. I mean, I could make believe a thing exists like a pine cone opening. But for daddy's spit, is it also the tree's many a small mouth. I hear of sovereignties. I hear of the first world. But having survived facing off with the progeny, ancestors, I'm told, are no prophylactics against it. In our bodies, there are no borders, the new Edo Mexico ad says. So here come the killers and their retors, John Bolton, Elliot Abrams, Juan Sarate of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Here, I'm told, is a song. George Zimmerman, whose countryman. And this is poem for Susan Briante. <laughs> Uh, the Pietà is Michelangelo's sculpture of Mary holding the dead Jesus. Diogenes was a Greek troublemaker. <laughs> in the transit, knowledge comes a dust cloud. Synthetic, inclusive. I'll nod at arriving ideas coming down the jetway. The Pietà trundled over for mercy. But isn't it morning? And you read Encyclopedia is circling, training in a circle made. For ancestors, we saw mirrors looking at people looking away, like shoppers turning from Diogenes, who hoped to feel free jerking off in the marketplace against privacy owned. Didn't he do that? From the hills stacked high into dust clouds comes our queer air to strip my high-tech fabrics, my dour national demeanor, for a love to call a wife, to sit and jerk off for you in the little chair by the door. But I went to work. <laughs> Ask me again and I'll be your sculptural reference to name 
as foul, as fair, as fictional as men, incapable and written, refusing to be countries for each other's graves, just eyes trained on the next idea trained into a circle for memory fit to a wrist, I'll be your jewelry part of the past. Joyce, but obviously respond to him McCain, so <laughs> it's all good. Um, I printed some of these out. There's also a B-side uh, because I like reading poems. Sometimes I don't catch it all when I hear it. So please, I would love for you to take one on your way out. Um, there's also some stuff from my press, Fancy Press, that's not mostly by me, but The Odyssey. And this is after Nick Laird. I designed the gas station mostly to be a thing of beauty, its utility and afterthought. Most things were like that, really, and I admit, if I had given more thought to the effects of something like drilling for oil, I may have done it all a bit differently. But I dreamed myself driving through a valley, again dreamlike, Row on endless row of steadily thrumming clean turbines, alien white. Fields of flashing plates drinking the sun. And the wire skeletons of transmission towers, prehistoric paragons of progress. And along the mountains, as a backdrop to it all, a train. Endless cars of steel rolling slowly on. I dreamed the San Gorgonio Pass, dreamed the oil fields of East Texas. If I had one blind spot, it was destruction. And in that, I am not so different from you. I made the drilling rig like you might set off a firework, wanting to see beauty, not thinking of who might be harmed. And the majesty of those towering creatures, necks plunging deep into the earth, can be denied only by someone biased in how they look at the world. Nature was meant to be no more beautiful than machine, and I, I love all of my children equally. May I suggest, humbly, as an exercise, the next time you see a fly running its front legs over its face, to think of it more like a cat. Perhaps then you will begin to see what I mean when I say, all things are full of grace. You worry the problem of evil, but it is no problem at all, only the framing of it. And I don't mean to sound callous. I created you in my image, yes, but I wanted to give you the gift of more rest, so it is impossible you understand it all. As for the gas stations, it is the light. How the gas pumps take on a greenish glow as if underwater. How at dusk they become almost beautiful. Love hate them. Um, 
you know. Um, so I brought several, but I'm not going to bore you. Um, I promise. And uh, I last saw you six plus years ago. Yeah. And about seven weeks after I saw you, um, my partner uh, took his own life. So, um, and uh, so none of the tourmaline work can count. Um, so, what I'm doing is writing a book, uh, and I've kind of formed a form called a sequela. So I'm going to read you two sequelas. They're not um, they're not traditional forms. They're about um, be, they're about being an analog to a, a cell, to a frame of film. Sequela of lies. Vicious dogs sicked on five grown-ass men pressed into a fence and mousered into pose after pose. There never was a caravan or any unbroken procession over land. Nothing as the crow flies. Until you know the bubble of poison knifing your esophagus, there will be no medevac. So you live like a lizard. Devoted to emptiness as you eye the expanse as you would a toilet. The world to come, and who will not receive it, hurts the self with solitude. Live as if you're toxic, like you are anthrax, silent, sent in cargo planes across this waste of a country. Just open a hand before the maw of the nearest moving shadow of a shepherd, a coyote. A pity circles the boulder on which you stand, as if under arrest or threat. A bulge in a pant leg is a thick black barrel, is something of an end. Unalive sequela. Another time, you pull the impacted door in the hard pack arroyo. Everyone told you something about evacuating car crashes and shimmering away, or about a shim for getting in but not out. Was that for drowning? You wish someone could see you, had seen you before, or ever, even ever seen you. Now your dress is shorn lilac, bespeckled with blood spray and gray matter, a cage cracked and sprung, sputtering, hangs in smoke, split scalp like a mouth through which it all pours. A razor splitting the silk or the Kevlar of the parachute, the unclotting waste of the hour glass. In a midnight of the sweeping horizon, in the aftermath of a screech of tires, in the outskirts of a town that forgets and then rebuilds itself with casinos and franchise and trucks that are indifferent monsters, or worse, blaring, let's go, meaning let's kill and maim, let them all have it in the gut and the face with a punisher glowing on glass, a punisher behind the wheel, a punisher confronting you with the weight of a god, all backwards and side roads. The god you know was, after all, always punishing shoving people into whales and boats and graves, graves, graves. You will burn into the air here and later by design into a receptacle that cannot help itself become anything but cumbersome and tasteless. The truck you imagine being carefully tarped somewhere, almost like a swaddled infant, a thing even a punisher cannot help but love. Everything you love, you wish were arrayed as your eyes remain open and, like a pharaoh, surveil and the eyes, then sated, close themselves unalive. Next is another one of our POG directors, Cynthia Miller.
I'm a painter. I wish I did portraits. What a beautiful. Well, poets are always the best dancers, too. Right? So, <laughs> all right, I'm going to read you a fairy tale. Um, uh, this is a fairy tale, How to End the War. And I wrote this for Ukraine. God. And it goes on. And then the rain began and stayed and stayed. The rain was on everyone and everything. The metal rusted and fell where it stood. As the people, the very wet people, began to grow fluffy down, their feet became webbed, their feathers protected them, feeling strangely familiar, strange as they had become one another, become strangely happy. They conversed in quacks and purrs, let it rain, let it rain, on the soldiers and all their, all their killing machinery, bolts and nuts and metal beat by rain, by more than rain, turning metals back to ore. Melting melts the war. Soon even soldiers walked on webbed feet, grew long down feathers, amazed as was their time. The rain rained and rained and grew a lake, then an ocean. Feathered people swam everywhere in all their elements together. So I wrote this poem when I was 30, a poem I'm really happy about. It's very old now. But this summer, I started a monsoon 60, where I wrote during the monsoon, um, it's good about loss. And hopefully in the future, I'll take those poems and do the thing that people call magic, but I call procedure or poem them. And with luck, I will have a good poem. But the truth is, it takes me about two years to write a good poem. So what I'd like to read for you today is the least sucky piece <laughs> of the monsoon 60s. And then because I'm vain, I'm going to read you a little bit of something I like. And I will keep on the free. I promise. OK. This is, oh, the other thing I have to say is that a lot of the work I did came out of something Pong does, that Lisa Martin Spears had, which is called the Sabino Poets. She takes us into the woods. Many people hike. I toddle, I hobble, I move to the longest distance WPA built table, I have my back to the parking lot, because that is where I'm at. So this is one of those poems. Ka is for cutting, M is for meandering in place, perpetual lotus as sentence, or the stars, and passage between the guardian text and the stars, and the further shimmer. I'm looking to acquire the case of the body at home. And then I'm going to read something I actually like. This is a tiny notebook, no, tiny chapbook, called The Monster's Public Sentence. And this is the last capital of the book called Pure, Pure Fraction. The interiors to Manifesto and the exteriors to Utopia are returned of the wicked and thrown back, tenderness as a stranger on a surface, 
turmoil spoken, going through and sung. But who is this the stranger in the margins, soft and rooted, her ideas wandering as is her habit? This house has eaten me and kept me in awe. This poem is called New Look Like. Beast chill afternoon to be a part of. The lady on vacation visits daily with the quiet of an uncontacted boy at an invisible table off the register, folding forks and knives and napkins. I don't want to be alive anymore. I'm 17, my skin is luminescent, and I can't stop laughing. I'm afraid to. Lob my skull into the gateway metamorphosis she'll never locate markings of. And this is called Exit the Improv. At what point shall my interstellar manufacturer account for the odds one might leave coins to mark a fall and aside unexpected roads on wrong continents? Attempt to patch or breach the earthen walls of rendered field. Tidy up after myself or shred my vehicle on purpose. Spin, grinning from chaos, weightlessness inside the brainless intersection. Expect messes only within designated grid coordinates. Is this pinning down of butterflies you're subjugated by as much a matter than of attitude, a slouch? Let's burn our lifetimes into books that never serve me, intimates my Lord, my overlord. My Lord, you made me. God, you made me. Think me not a child, rather your robotic operating buddy. <laughs> reading since COVID, so, wow. Yeah. I thought I'd read from this little pop chapbook that we did a couple of years ago. It's a piece about letters called Theory of Paper. Letters P and Q. P and Q, no matter how ferociously they guard their respective positions, cannot save themselves from the implacable and paperless rhythms of the alphabet. The literal never meets its image and the margins further multiply, so the two are infinite to the pen beyond the paper. One writes a letter similar to the error in one's own. One is object, and one is stone, and the interval between them is always the same. It's the difference in ideals that stands unbroken. Some letters record no shadow. In others, only the cover, gracefully withdrawn, remains. Imagine desire as another dimension in the paper. And has there ever been an event that did not choose anything to begin with? Our face reveals a creature that might shape itself as a Knowing that the next letter will be inked in some semblance of gray, one divines without a single background all the letters of the past. But which letter inhabits the space that unfolds along its tangent line? The letter dreams, as it walk, can be seen to multiply. Is it possible that one could be reduced to a single point within a frame that one could not possibly imagine? 
some think that the problem of the letter is that line can be deduced from the outline of the paper itself, knowing all the while that the angle they make between them is always new. The heart begins with the letter that feels the impossibility of being known. Does the letter draw the mind, or does the mind's edge incise the letter? When or where is the plane of the letter also the truth of the letter? for white people. I read this as a white person. And um, it's guaranteed to bring you right down. And um, some of the language from it comes from the California State Commission um, that was um, created to come up with some calculations for reparations payments, which, which I believe in. One, use the most recent census figures to determine the average number of house, average number of people living in non-white and white households in your town. What does household conjure? Boiling corn or mac and cheese on the stove, bleach or matches tucked under the sink, claustrophobia and care. Do not allow any of this to factor into your calculations. Find the total wealth in homes controlled collectively by all the non-white households in your town, as well as that controlled collectively by all white households. For the purposes of this exercise, we will not count as wealth the number of nights per week you get eight hours of sleep, the educational level of your grandparents, the age of your mother's car. After calculating total housing wealth controlled by each of these groups, compute their estimated per capita. Notice how these equations scream and flatten. A yelp under a splayed palm, a styrofoam cup popping underfoot. Do nothing with this noticing. Add the compounded annual 30-year mortgage interest rate to discover the non-white and white home ownership gap. What are you entitled to? Or how will you contribute to bridging that difference? In payments, in parcels, with a home value acknowledgement at the start of every poetry reading. In the production of these equations, piercing calculations, the arrowheads of less than or more than with which the world was skewed and scorched and written. Two, you buy a house for $199,000 with 10,000 down, PMI, and a $25,000 second balloon mortgage to cover what you did not have in down payment. At closing, your mortgage broker gives you a crystal vase. You feel like you are part of a deal you don't understand because you are part of a deal that you don't understand. Within five years, your mortgage changes hands three times. You sell the home for a $10,000 profit. Your money fractures and multiplies for other people like light hitting crystal. Subtract from your profit the amount you spent to rebuild the failing wall, replace the sore line, buy enough furniture to assuage your anxiety, as if. Measure the miles from your house to the site of the city's most famous lynching, most famous assassination, to the place where the council passed its laws on loitering, or how much of a man's underwear could show above his jeans. How will you factor in those numbers two by two, by 10, by centuries, existentially, your access, your excess value? Extra credit. Note, you bought your first house because of a tax break signed into law by the first black president. Date the check you write for the down payment on your next house post-race. 
Thank you. This is the brown Chinese notebook, and all that means is that I wrote it in a brown notebook that was given to me at a conference in China. So, ask only, but ask for, ask for, not four, but two, ask for two, two words, as two, two words are a sentence as rain falls, or I see, I see two words turn to three or four, and soon I see rainfall, and soon I am wet, rain is wet, water is wet, ink is wet, words are thus wet, thus, thus, and thus we play with four words and certain stars, if anything might be certain, and stars shoot madly, shoot from their spheres, spheres and fears as love might be three words, love might be three more, there we are. Love might be there, where we are, where the shadows of ferns in the mountains, trees allow light to cast an image. We cast words like a throw of the dice, cast ashes down from previous burns. Still in the forest, in the mountains, love casts light down, our eyes cast light up, we are undone by words. What's a poet anyway? Not so much, but a collector of light, sound, words, shadows cast our way. If and when we go our way, what way or way is missed, is lost, is not written, has lost words, drowned by light. Give me then just two words to begin a thread spun, thread spun upon a one or a two, just two. What becomes a poet, and how comes to be, to be or rest, there rest upon one syllable, ah, 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 rest may be silence and nothing, no laurels to rest upon. One war, and two wars, and three wars, and one rebellion, is it a war? Call it a war, and one defensive action, a war too, also a genocide, another war, and a war did not end, all wars, a war with a big bang ended, no, wars, only you can prevent, what, what war can you prevent, I will, I will, will fight, no, no more forever, and until the end, now the end, the end of the day, the end of the night, the end of the seventh ending, of the seventh inning, the end of the sun's rain, the end of the rain, the end of a life, the end of nothing, the end of the end. Salvador it was built, uh, this was set in the 80s, it was built to house women insurgents. Uh, today it houses women who've had abortions in defiance of El Salvador's absolute ban on abortion. Ilopango. Still the stories. She went into the women's prison in San Salvador, Ilopango knowing only the names of two women who might talk to her. It isn't safe to talk to foreigners. My friend with her light hair and green eyes who told this story would never be anything else. One of the women said she had fought in battles. She was proud to be FMLN, wore her army green shirt, organized the women in the political prisoners ring. One of the women had worked in a health clinic was guilty of vaccinating peasant children. She wore a dress, nursed her infant daughter. 
heart of torture for every woman, my friend tells me, still the stories, is rape. Every woman in that prison had been raped many times. One of the women wore a dress and nursed her infant daughter, the seed of rape and torture. Still, his mother, the stories, decided to love her child. And my friend had watched the woman in the army green shirt take the baby in her arms, cuddle the infant, laugh, and swing the baby high. She rules the hearts of all the women here. Still, I hear the stories of this much love I can barely imagine. And then we can move 20 years forward to uh, the Adirondack Mountains. <clears throat> this is a, a mountain at George for Jan and Adam. We climbed that mountain in the snow, the three of us, you remember, how our boots were soaked through after the first half mile. But we slogged on, holding ourselves carefully on the ice spots, thinking to show your son the view from the windblown summit of his first mountain. We stopped at a waterfall, splashed with ice lace, delicate as a snowflake, not quite concealing deep and cold rushing water. I lined you up for a picture, your son by your side, the gray rock rising behind you, a winter perfect picture, all tones of gray and white and dark mossy greens in the water and pine trees, your son by your side, his lean young body repeating yours. I paused and looked around the camera to check the image, then pressed shutter. But the camera took no picture. We fussed with it briefly, then threw it in a pack, shrugged, and went on climbing. At the top, we found only mist and clouds, no amazing view to entice this boy to climb again. Yet we had a wonderful day, do you remember? He will not soon forget the climb, the summit with no view. And I will remember a photograph that exists only in me, the moment when I looked around the camera and saw you, saw winter closing round your frosted skin, saw dark water rushing through you, saw your hand resting easily on your son's shoulder. some uh, work poems. I'm an electrician. Under tap room okay, at Hotel Congress. I descend stairs from the Hotel Congress lobby, turn past a workbench, and breathe in deeply a century's yeasty scent of spilled cake beer. Oh. Well, the toast given to friendship and health in that room above, the meetings and the partings, the handshakes and the hugs. I keep on walking past a cold boiler and stop under a glassy sidewalk. I'm bathed in purple sunlight. These old glass vault lights, prisons set in concrete and steel, scattering light below, were colorless lenses like our eyes but with time took the tint of manganese. Though in disuse, this little room under the sidewalk has an electric lamp that's not working, but soon I find the problem, and the power gift to the sun can be given again under the night. I drive home knowing new generations will drink at sidewalk tables softly illumined by ghosts of a century sunlight rising from the room below. Tiger doesn't work there anymore. He's 90. And we miss him. 90? What do you want? I know, I know. <laughs> I think he wanders in once in a while. Salt of my body dried white upon a black shirt. The rains have not come. 
vacant house has books. Their dictionary, like their long-lasting marriage, has no cover now. Its worn pages are so soft, one thinks of touching their skin. Work late, 21 September. This was a few decades ago, I think. On the low rent street, lovers walking hand in hand in the evening. The last summer sunset fades and I turn my truck to home. Evening embrace. When sunset's last light lit the hair of my head, cicadas still sang. When twilight's last wind warmed the skin of my face, doves winged their way to roost. When the light of the moon calmed my mind, bats winged their way to feed. So called Chimex, but it's illegal to cross baloney into the United States. So it's created this like underground market for Chimex. And for about 25 years in El Paso, you hear news stories about customs agents seizing 100 pounds of bologna, 200 pounds of bologna at a time. Um, so this is about the bologna smugglers. But the first part of this poem, um, I, I looked up this uh, news article, one of these many news articles about the bologna smugglers, and the sentences are better than anything I could ever do. So this is just a bound poem. That's the first part, and then my poem comes second. Mexican bologna has persisted as the most popular prohibited food item. The contraband bologna is in the form of red colored rolls called chubs. The chubs weigh about 10 pounds each. While some are for personal consumption, large quantities are carefully concealed in cars and trucks. One man had 35 rolls hidden under blankets in the back seat of his SUV, along with nine rolls of another illegal lunch meat. <laughs> the penalty for not declaring a commercial amount of bologna is $1,000. The US bologna is lighter in color than the Mexican version too. Over there, it's kind of a reddish color. I really don't know what's in there, but it's really good. <laughs> Customs officers destroy the bologna by incinerating it at ports of entry, and it does smell like a big hot dog roast at the border. <laughs> it's better than my poem. So, so here, here's my poem, and there's an epigraph in the voice of a customs agent, and it says, will no one rid me of this turbulent bologna? Will, will no one rid me of this troublesome bologna? And now here's the poem. Nefta and the bologna smugglers. The feast of the border is made possible by Nefta and the bologna smugglers. We're searching for the bologna smugglers. Bologna that looks like a giant pink pill. Bologna that looks like a flesh-colored submarine. You have to raise it above your head and javel it into the truck. <laughs> bologna nostalgia reaps through these lands. Bologna nostalgia weeps through the sands of the border. Porky more and porky safe. Porky less and porky cut. The baloney of darkness arrives at our doorstep. Who will rid me of this meddlesome baloney? Baloney schemes baloney. Bologna, meet your baloney. Nefta declares to customs, no chicken, no pork, no baloney. But us customs know Nefta too well, and we seize his meats. Some of his more suspicious sausages we call meats of light. For we now have to search for items hidden inside the bologna. We're cracking meat and shining light through the meat. And pimento never lies. And yes, truly, Nefta, you're guilty of bologna. Who among us knows the root 
in battles, corpse, fields, wraith of once seen ravens, parliament. We who merely watch bird whirl, spiraling down as one to earth, not dirt but asphalt, tennis courts replacing wetlands. Do not. I'm startled by the cause of laughter, seeing crows persist in gathering at, anciently, the mirror which was edged in roof somewhere here. Thank you. read for the funny team, but I, I'm not tonight, which is a big mistake. <laughs> so um, this is a couple sections from a manuscript in progress called Ghost Note 3, The Living End. It's a third of a series of volumes. Um, there's an a early Chan thing uh, called Trust in Mind, and there's a pretty famous couple lines in it that say, um, uh, I'm forgetting what it says, wait. Here we go. The, the great way isn't difficult, you just don't get to prefer. But I got a typo and it turned out to be the great was isn't difficult. So that kind of makes its way through the man. That's as funny as it gets. All right, so four. So he noodles round the decay of that colossal wreck with a name to come. The lone and level sands stretch far away. And so it was I entered the broken world. I mean, I came again to the place with no name, or else it was the name with no place. I couldn't tell which, who, whom, or whose, or which it was. Each difference makes a difference, she said. Enormous turtles, helpless and mild, die and leave their barnacled shells on the beaches and their large white skulls with round eye sockets twice the size of a man's. The great was isn't difficult, oh. In the early morning rain, three birds huddled low in a creosote bush. Rocks that had tumbled down once toward the dry wash now lay canted along the gradual declivity, completely still. The here and now, it said, is the world splayed out in space and time. Made no mistake. I said, no, it said dope. That means right here, right now, exactly. I said, yes, sir. It said, no, sir, don't be a smart ass. I said, okay then, sir. I guess I don't know, sir. I don't understand. The great was, in, the great was isn't difficult, it said again. So I entered the broken world precariously eternal. Is that right? It said, no, nope, not quite. A gap in the sky, a wormhole, light poured into, then got sucked back out again, draining everything with it is the great was. Get it? So I entered the broken aftermath. Presente, I said, all yours, it said. Make of it what you will. And I woke in a remnant, a revenant, mouthing a text. I entered the broken world. What is this no? And then there's one more little section. It's a kind of writing through of, of David Hinton's uh, translations of Du Fu. Uh, there are some things in brackets at the end, so I can only read it one way, but it could be either enter or enters, divine or divines, or never end or never ends. So four, five, sorry. Cloud layers cleave blue-green dawn mountains, birth heaven, then return. One bird, small ancestor, all eye, chest heaving, enters, divines change, never end. Thank you. scratches, long and bright against our young thighs. My primas and I, we met the devil before we were even 15. Back then, an encounter with the devil meant something. Today, the kids laugh at him. 
They don't understand our scars. We were nourished by the blood of Christ, taught to feed off his thorns still embedded deep in his temples. My sins are so bright, they sing. Even under dark garments and through the congressional, the priest can smell my torment, can't distinguish my sin from my worship. The Lavender Pit. Yes, the open pit in Bisbee actually has a name. Lavender, not like the color, but like the then vice president of Phelps Dodge, the mining company. Vice President Mr. Harrison Lavender. But some have told me the pit was actually named after a minero who threw himself in the pit as protest. They tell me it was too expensive to retrieve his body, so they left him there to rot, not expecting the delicate flowers that would bloom from his still decaying body. Still, I've heard others call the pit the Green Pit, so folks know where to find Kevin, the weed man, who sells you the best shit in Arizona, but only if you climb the 1,000 steps. <laughs> they also call it the Blues Pit, in honor of the color they mine to make jewelry for cowboys, and the annual Blues Festival, and your lips that one December. Remember? The night your car broke down on our way back to Douglas, how we pressed our bodies against each other, waited to be spotted in the quiet curves of the street. Do you remember how hard I laughed when you told me your parents conceived you right there in the Pitts visitors parking lot? <laughs> told me since then, you call it Papa Pit. <laughs> I think I laughed all the way back home, just thinking of Vice President Mr. Harrison Lavender and your parents fucking right there next to his plaque, our hometown legacy. jawed and red-faced and asking questions. There is no girl, no holy Bible, no gum stuck to the bottom of the table. Lock need and trading lovers for lungs. There is no decaf, no wedding ring, no sexy goodbye blow kiss. Stiff-fingered and spilling spine, there is no edge, no fish-eyed lens, no folded corner of the page. Here there is survival and luxury, tight blue jeans and undeniable shapes, intoxication and freshly bleached toilet seats, designer suits and burnt fingertips, French food and perfect tits, high cheekbones and psychiatric evaluations, blank stares and plastic wrap. Check off these boxes with volatile embodied worship. A piano partially submerged in water, almost like a small lake. The instinctual conflict in summing up, sliced open from neck to groin, and you in linen sheets, silent, spilling all over yourself, only to move away from it. The compulsive form, sexy capture and sex and capture, property and sex and sex and capture. The primal form, ego eyes, brown red eyes and holes, the imaginary form, wrinkles on cheeks, skin, deep and deep skin sinks. The carnal form, rotting, 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 and pubic hair. The morning form, please and beg, please read the line over and over. The sadistic form, 
look out and pull and don't stop pulling. in shirts and pants, kneeling on worms. Grandmother always in front, human head and bird body. She opens her wings, inseminates the vegetables. I am the last lodging of the curse that passed through the women in my family, the pearl among this broken maker. Toadstools grow out of the lichen on the trees. I pull off their tops, chew and spit without swallowing. My breath is humid, subsoil, hideaway. I smash the petals of the poppies, paint my face with their juice. I lick butterfly wing dust, open the carapaces of the beetles. The strength of the weak possesses me. And this is the last one. I'll read it in Spanish and English just so you get a sense of Natalia's voice. Rezo, pero acaso alguien escucha este delincho? Hay algo magnífico en la espera, el murmullo hacia el oído de nadie. I pray, but does anyone even hear this whinnying? There's something glorious in waiting, rustling into no one's here. There's a great audience, and we've had some great readers, and we have one last great reader who is a pog stalwart and is a wave archive, the wave maestro, John Malillo. so so amazing one single durational long beautiful poem that we've all put together thank you all so much uh, i realized i never told anybody where the bathrooms were but you all them really really tough um, they are behind that door luckily i'm the last poet um and i'm gonna uh read a poem and uh sing a song i usually sing songs um and uh, doing a poem is way harder. So, sonnet on a line from Chapman's Homer, and Heinrich Wolflin on Karachi's Galatea, and some 17th century treatise on oysters. It is ordinary in most histories to read of blood falling in showers. The sea had soaked his heart through, fish man holding down the body, she's falling into water, no floating up the sky, apo, apotheosis, how remote is the light stance abandoning herself totally. I read that wrong. 
How remote is the light stance, abandoning herself totally to the weight. Keep moving, stretch between fish want and sky need. Float away, dolphin food, keep moving. This mass given to the waves to pick up and push back to earth and air, don't die. Again next week, one week from now, like right next door at one tool. Wave the ocean, wave the shore, wave one more time and wave some more. Wave the ocean, wave the sea, wave one more time and back to me. Back, turn, swing. Thanks, everybody, for being <laughs>